In the news this week, the Equality and Human Rights Commission confirms that single-sex spaces are legitimate, a former number 10 advisor warns the government against rushing its conversion therapy ban, and top footballers and other celebrities will no longer be able to advertise gambling. Hello. The Equality and Human Rights Commission has said men who identify as women may legitimately be excluded from female-only spaces, angering LGBT activists. New guidance says gyms, refuges and rape counselling clinics may reasonably require spaces to be explicitly reserved for biological women to protect their dignity and privacy. This also extends to hospital wards where women might object to a male being present on grounds of privacy. Transgender NHS Equality Chief Tara Hewitt told other senior NHS officials to ignore the advice by putting it in the bin. But Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he believes single-sex spaces should be respected. I also happen to think that um, women should have spaces which are, whether it's in, in, in hospitals or prisons or change rooms or wherever, which are, are dedicated to, to, uh, to women. That's as far as my thinking has developed on this on this issue. Uh, now, if that puts me in conflict with, um, you know, some others, then we, we, we've got to work it all out. The Institute's Sam Webster explained the guidance simply reflects the current law. This is legislation that's been on the statute book for well over a decade. We're talking about the Equality Act 2010 here, aren't we? We are, and it's... Um, it's uh, it's in line totally with guidance that the Christian Institute's been given to supporters and churches for a very long time. And it's very welcome that they've, they've published some very practical guidance to help. A former senior advisor to Number 10 has told Westminster it must not rush its proposed conversion therapy ban. The government indicated last week it was ready to ditch a ban, but after activists reacted with outrage, ministers said they would progress with legislation. Former Director of Legislative Affairs Nikki da Costa warned the proposed legislation could cause rather than prevent harm to children and called for sufficient time to be given to address the serious concerns. She said any bill banning conversion therapy for sexual orientation is bound to see poorly drafted amendments to insert gender identity tabled within weeks of introduction. When the stakes are as high as they are in this case, involving vulnerable children, the need for circumspection has never been greater. The government has said gender confusion will not be covered by a ban on conversion therapy, but former Archbishop of Canterbury Rowan Williams and Baptist Minister Steve Chalk wrote to the PM to object. They said to be transgender is to enter a sacred journey of becoming whole, and that every church should be a safe space that affirms people in being who they are without fear of judgment. Institute Deputy Director Kieran Kelly said their comments show a poor understanding of salvation and discipleship. Converting to Christ means that we stop living for ourselves and we start living for him. And how do we know how to do that? We have the Bible, and the Bible tells us about the nature of ourselves, the nature of God, and what pleases him. And it says that we are made male and female in the image of God. It says that sexual activity is only for marriage, and it says that marriage is only between one man and one woman. And to reject these truths isn't sacred, it's sinful. And as Christians, we're called to uh, reject sin, and seek with the Spirit's help to become more like Christ day by day. This is the real sacred journey, and it's one that thousands of faithful churches, full of people, who, including LGB and T people, who are engaged on this journey. Pro-marriage campaigners say the new quickie divorce law in England and Wales is a huge mistake, which will lead to an increase in broken families. Previously, anyone wanting a divorce had to prove their marriage had irretrievably broken down through adultery, unreasonable behaviour, desertion, or separation for a set period. But the new law, which came into effect on the 6th of April, will permit couples to divorce within six months without a reason, and a jilted spouse cannot contest the decision. Colin Hart, chairman of Coalition for Marriage, said we are extremely disappointed that the government has ignored all the data and strong arguments against speeding up the process under the delusion that no-fault divorce will somehow prevent hurt feelings and bad breakups. They will not. The government is making a huge mistake ploughing on with these reckless changes, a mistake that will be measured not just by cold official statistics, but by broken families and ruined lives. And finally, 
New advertising rules mean top footballers and other celebrities will soon be banned from promoting betting. Gambling adverts, which are likely to appeal more to children than to adults, are already banned, but the Committee for Advertising Practice, or CAP, now says adverts must not appeal to young people at all, regardless of how adults perceive it. This means that when the rules are introduced in October, high-profile figures with an appeal to children like Cristiano Ronaldo and Neymar cannot be used by firms to promote their services. CAP director Sharia Kupal said this might not seem immediately significant, but its effect, particularly in a World Cup year, will be dramatic. By ending these practices, our new rules invite a new era for gambling ads. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye. <laughs>